Hey, Joe. Brian, so you guys can't do it live? This is the first year ever. Uh, when I talked to Tim this summer, he told me that they were going to do this. He made it sound like it was a benefit for fans. He's like, that way every game can be live. We're, I think we're going to do a partnership with NFHS. And so I think they started a five-year agreement with them where they get every single regional boys game. And then my question to him, I remember I looked in his eyes and he didn't have a good answer. I was like, well, if you're doing it for the fans, why aren't you doing it for the girls' games? So do they have anybody covering the girls' semifinal games as far as, like, live TV or streaming? Just as that at NFHS. NFHS. Yep. They got a monopoly over the whole thing from here on out. Just switch. This is maybe the worst atmosphere I've ever seen for a tournament game. What's going on here? A little bit different than. <laughs> this ain't quite the Joe Arena from last weekend, my gosh. Well, Rich Richmond Heights will bring no one. Are you in Dayton all weekend? Are you there Thursday, Friday, Saturday? Yeah. Yeah. I put you, I'm, I know you're probably already in there roaming around with a credential. If you want to call the Loudonville game with Travis, he's going to do that one on Thursday. If they win, he'll do it again on Saturday. Oh, okay. So let me know because Abram Capel will also be down there. He said that he'd be game to call the matches if, if, you're, if you have duties or anything going on. Doesn't I mean it does make any difference? Whoever, if he wants to do it, fine. If not, I can do it. Um, okay. Just, well, just well, you got first know. dibs, coach. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> That's the first game on Thursday, I think, right? Correct. 11 a.m. tip. And you you got you do the same with that. Then that's you you can just rebroadcast it. No video at all for state. What's it, that? It nope. has to be just audio, and then really? we can have highlights. Hmm. But that's always been the case. Right. I mean, until this year, even when I worked at the TV station back in 2008, you could broadcast regional games live. This is the first time ever that they're allowing an FHS company to have exclusive rights to all of it. And I, I don't even see them here. They're not here. Unless they're set up somewhere I don't see. 
so you can't you can't do the Shelby. <laughs> The first ever regional appearance for Seneca East comes with a major challenge tonight as two-time defending state champion Richmond Heights stands in their way seeking a fifth straight trip to the state final four. It's boys tournament basketball streaming anywhere the internet can be found between the Northern 10 Conference champion Tigers and state number three Spartans. And it's all coming at you next. Instead of paying for some big name spokesperson, Kasasa Checking gives that money back to you in cash rewards. In fact, you just bought me this cup of coffee. See how that works? Amazing! Free checking, cash rewards. Take back banking with Kasasa. At Willard Family Dentistry, we are committed to providing our community with individualized, informative care. We take the time to get to know you and help you understand your oral health to make sure we help you achieve your healthiest, most brilliant smile. Whether you are due for a cleaning or are interested in cosmetic treatments, you are in good hands with the team at Willard Family Dentistry. Call or visit them online to book your appointment today. Ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Canton Memorial Fieldhouse for the Attica Lumber pregame show. I am Brian Skronsky, the Hall of Famer Joe Baylog joining me tonight. Tigers taking the stage for the first time at regionals against the D4 state favorite in Richmond Heights. And I don't want to discount Seneca East, Joe, but this definitely, it's got a lot of vibes, kind of that David and Goliath story here in this one. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's kind of the, <laughs> the Rocky Balboa, the Hoosiers. Um, Seneca East has a, has a big task in front of them, but um, as you've always said, you, you don't have to play a seven game or a five game series, you, you just have to play one, one game. Uh, and that's what makes this high school basketball tournament exciting. Um, but the size and athleticism of Richmond Heights is gonna be something that uh, is gonna be uh, a challenge for Seneca East to contend with tonight. 
Let's tell you about the Tigers who just cut down nets as district champions for the first time on Friday. We just saw them twice at the district round, Joe. They're very unselfish. This is a balanced team that can score, but that 1-3-1 one, one defense, that's really what's led them since the start of the new year. Yeah, I mean, that 1-3-1 one, one is, uh, you know, it, it's it's difficult to figure out. And and for the Senequese Tigers tonight, hopefully that's something that's going to be difficult uh, for Richmond Heights uh, to be able to, to, to try to figure out tonight because they're going to need a great defensive effort tonight uh, in this basketball game. But, um, again, they're here, and that's the key key part. You're here, you got a chance. Um, and let's see what uh, Coach Langhurst has put together as a game plan tonight. And they are led by a sophomore point guard who led the Northern 10 Conference in both assists and steals per game. That being one of the coach's kids, Luke Mason. He can create his own shot, but I really think he shines, Coach, when he's looking for others and being the facilitator within the offense. Yeah, I mean, it, he averages just about 10 points a game and probably, if he really wanted to, could average 16 to 20. By next year. Um, but... The, the key to Seneca East is not their individuals, just it's the whole. I mean, you take 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 them as individuals. Uh, don't discredit this. You know, they're, they're not maybe as, uh, as skilled as a lot of other plays they played, but you put those five together, guys together as a team, and this team has been a team here in the tournament. There they are, Richmond Heights. They're entering the season this year, Joe, on a 49-game winning streak, one of the best in the history of the state. They started 0-3 against the toughest schedule in Division IV, but their starting five is absolutely littered with college prospects. Even without T.J. Crumble, a top recruit for the class of 2026, this team is a heavy, heavy favorite to repeat as state champions. Yes, I mean, they, they have outstanding talent. They basically returned their entire starting five from a team, as you mentioned, that they did won bring them all back, baby. 49 games in a row. <laughs> Went 29 and zero last year, and basically was maybe the best team in not just Division Four, but in the entire state. Got off to a little bit of a rough start this year, but again, the schedule they played. But they have wins, you know, wins over Saint Ignatius, Pick Central, Akron Saint B, <laughs> Keep it going. Saint Edward. Um, you know, you're not going to find too many D4 teams that have that kind of resume. Um, and Coach Quentin uh, Rogers' team has a great resume. Our player spotlight team tonight, we're going with Derek Barber, led the Northeast Ohio area in assists for a third straight year. He's been doing this since he was a freshman. First team All-Ohio as a sophomore. He chops more dimes than a sofa cushion. I'm telling you what, this dude can flat out dish it out. He's like a hamburger helper serving every time he's on the floor. He just sees it so well, Joe. Yeah, and, and only a junior, he's had great experience in, in playing in the state tournament. Um, so you expect nothing else out of him. The winner out of this one will move on and take on the victor between JFK and Downton on Friday night. We'll have the second half of the doubleheader here at Canton for you coming up live a little bit later on. And here is the regional Joe and the Division IV bracket and how it's all shaken out. The Sweet 16, this is who is left still in the tournament. Seneca East taking on the number three team in the state. Easily going to be their biggest challenge of the season. Yeah, it's going to be a tremendous challenge, but, uh, you know, Coach Langhurst, uh, you know, he, he's probably talked a lot to his kids. Um, and the key thing is you just got to, you know, get off to a good start here. Uh, we said the first three minutes are important, and I think that's going to be the case tonight. I think even more so perhaps in this game, just proving that you belong on this big yeah. stage going against the likes of kids that are getting all these offers from Power 5 schools, the athleticism, it's been unbelievable. And with that, we'll now toss it over to Travis Berardi. He's going to be live with you on the audio cast. And then here on our video broadcast, we see a three taken immediately, and it's nothing but that for Damaris Winters Jr. Yep. Quick look off the one pass and able to knock it down against that 1-3-1 one, one defense. Now you got to be able to try to handle the pressure, and one of the things they're able to do is, is create offense with defense, and here they are able to get another quick look, a quick steal, and Richmond Heights up 5-0. That was Jeremy Wilson with the rebound and put back. 
They'll leave some openings with their full core pressure, but they're so athletic. Look at that. The block is still out of midair. Winner sends it ahead. Contact and put home by Jose Steele Jr. Yeah, I mean, Richmond Heights right out of the gates. Great pressure, showing their athleticism with a steal and a block shot that both have led to transition baskets. And now another steal. No shots yet for the Tigers on the breakaway. A swat from behind Aiden Hines joining in the highlight hype. But you can see how quick Richmond Heights is in transition. It's just going to be a problem for Seneca East. Barber off the inbound. He finds Wilson. Fall away, Jay, at the foul line. It's 9-zip. I mean, just too big, too strong, just able to shoot right over top. Blake Foose gets the first shot offering here for Seneca East, but so quickly they get it out off the miss. Barber with the lob. It's missed off the front iron. Tigers in transition. Another tip, my goodness. This time it's winners, coast to coast, easy finish. I mean, the length, the length of uh, Richmond Heights is something that Seneca East has not seen all year. And it's 11-0 with less than two minutes gone in the basketball game. And Coach, we're going to get a quick timeout here, taken by Anthony Langhurst. Take a quick look at the starting lineups for both units. You see Hines, Bordner, Foose, Hicks. A lot of veterans out there surrounding the sophomore Mason. And you've already seen on display just the unbelievable athletic ability. Barbara Jr. sees the whole floor, but with winners, Steele, Wilson, and Jones, it's probably the most formidable starting five in the entire state, regardless of division, as you mentioned. And no TJ Crumble again. He transferred in from a season ago. He's considered one of the best prospects in the entire country for the class of 2026. But since he moved in, he's had to set out the second half of the year and, of course, the playoffs. Not missing a beat. No, they – I mean, they're, they're, there's no doubt that they are the, the formidable favorite in Division Four to, to win it all here. But for Seneca East, they got to do a much better job of taking care of the basketball here, try to get some ball movement. Um, which is going to be difficult. Nice move that time for Bordner. And both shots so far, three-pointers for the Tigers. So we'll hang on to possession. This will be Mason to inbound. Zone look here for Richmond Heights. Yep, with a 2-3 zone, now another deflection that leads to a transition basket. And Jones, a Skywalker, up and over the top for the one-handed throwdown. Could not have asked for a better start if you are the Spartans in this one. Jump balls and call on the floor. Possession arrow will keep it in the hands of Seneca East. But Richmond Heights, it was 7-0 on our Brandon Builder Sutton Bank scoreboard in the first 50 seconds. I mean, they, they set the tone right from the jump. Yeah, they hit a three right off the bat, and then they just forced several turnovers here. 0 for 3 from downtown for the Tigers. Hicks unable to knock down a three there. Wilson sends it here left side. Jones, big three. They are just so quick in transition. Um, Really difficult to get back. Foul on the reach in here against the Spartans. That'll be just the first on Richmond Heights. And we've got the switch. Hicks checks out. And Keno roughing into the mix. I mean, they've had that rotation of, of roughing and Hicks. You know, about every three minutes you're going to see that rotation. That continues here tonight. Mason to the rack, and the scoop shot missed it. Tigers remain scoreless, 0 for 5 from the field. But Ruffing with the steal and block on the recovery. Jose Still Jr., end to end left hand. A 
another steal. Boy, are they adding up here. Tigers get it right back, though. Bad pass by Winters. Off the setup, roofing in tight. And his first two off the mark and called for a reach in at the 421 mark. The, they blocked several shots and just the athleticism of Richmond Heights is causing Seneca East a lot of difficulty as you start rushing shots. Well, their acceleration into the passing lane is making me uncomfortable down yeah. here on Press Row, Joe. It's so fast. Yeah. I have not seen a team uh, with this much athletic talent on the defensive side yet this year. Yeah, they're just so long and athletic. And then when, able, when you're able to Ooh. make, you know, a shot that's three steps behind the three-point line um, with pressure, it's difficult to contend with. Spartans come away with it. They send it ahead for Wilson. Two hands in the flush. 23 nothing. And a foul reach in here on the floor. Uh, it's just a timeout. Okay. Timeout, Seneca East. I think Coach Langer's just trying to settle his guys down. But and Richmond Heights just off to a tremendous start here tonight in this uh, regional semifinal basketball game. They are perfect so far from beyond the arc. Knocked down each yeah. triple that they've tried. And when they get out in transition, everybody's a load with the basketball, Joe. They've got great handles. They tower over you. I mean, Obviously, they, Coach Langhurst, he, he's got some work to do yeah, here. Yeah, they, they got to they gotta try to find a way to take better care of the basketball and, and then try to find a way to get back in defensive transition. But um, not, not new for having the difficulty against a team like Richmond Heights in uh, these Division Four games. They pretty much have, you know, dominated uh, throughout the tournament this year and, and also in previous years um, until maybe they get to that state Final Four. But even last year in the state Final Four, they were a dominant team, I think, winning by 40 over uh, Convoy Crespi in, yeah, in the final. 44 actually set a state yeah. record. I remember that one. Yeah. And Convoy Crest, you, you know, kind of played with them pretty well in the first half, and then it was similar to what's happening right now as, as Richmond Heights went on one of those runs, and you just it's just difficult to slow them down. Mason sends it off, off the fake three, and a big collision. Blake Foos going to draw the personal foul. No, no harm done, though, to winners. Spartan basketball just past the midway point here of this opening frame. If you are just joining us, it quickly became the Spartans' night here in this first quarter. Barber off the bounce, sets up a wide open shooter. First miss from long range, but hanging and clanging there is Jones. Dorian Jones with an offensive rebound and a putback. So Richmond Heights just really dominating the basketball game. Mason, a good look. But it just, you know, with their athleticism, it just makes you kind of rush everything. And right now, Luke Mason, you know, pretty good three-point shooter, but just got to be a little bit quicker than maybe you normally would uh, in the games that you've played so far. Tough runner right side, and that one splashes as well for winners. He's in double figures with 10. Trapping both sides of the floor. Quick recovery, but Foos gets it in, and his block shot right there. Second look on the Willard Dentistry replay. Got to really credit Richmond Heights for not committing fouls when Seneca East has gotten into the lane so far. Yeah. I mean, they, do, they do a good job of just playing straight up. Again, the length there. And the three and again for winners. 
They've just been outstanding from the three-point line. Hines going to try one. Long rebound. He'll collect it. Foos goes to work left side. Again, getting a piece of it is Wilson. Foos has some nice size to him, but going in against Jeremy, listed at six yeah. foot five. Yeah. Hines fakes to the corner, patient. Now sets up for Blake. Turnaround jumper, front iron in the board for winners. You got to make sure here you get back and try to match in transition. But with how Richmond Heights has shot the basketball from deep, one of the few threes that they've missed. Yeah, second time. I think they've got five made triples already. Is it Mason with the blow by? What a recovery for Jeremy Wilson. Second opportunity, no. Well, Wilson averages almost two blocks a game. You can see why. I think he's got three already in the first quarter. Here he is running the break. Two on one in transition. The three flies. And it's a little short this time. We're heading the other way. My gosh. Just smashing that thing off of the backboard on that last replay. As we're down to the final minute here, quarter number one. Seneca East's first trip to regionals has not been a pleasant first seven minutes. Oh. Baseline winners, soft touch, count it. He'll head to the free throw line for a chance at an end one. Foul's going to be on Blake Foose. Excuse me, they're going to put it on Aiden Hines, his first. Just a really impressive start here for Richmond Heights. And winners with 15 here in the first quarter. And he averages his 12 a game. Off the baseline drive, Bordner. Foul's going to come on the floor. Be just the second on the Spartans. If you're the Tigers, just any points would feel great here. Instead, it's another giveaway. Intercepted by Jones. He goes in his second crunch of the rim tonight. Skip pass, Barber not able to get in there. Now Foos from the short corner dribbles in. And bumped out of his hands. So Tigers will keep it on these special plays, 14 seconds to go. Clean look from the corner. Tigers are on the board and their fans erupt. Down to two seconds. Baseline up and under and it drops the circus shot for Damaris Winter Jr. A fitting way to close the frame. He's got 16. It's 37-3 as we put the first quarter behind us. Instead of paying for some big name spokesperson, Casasa Checking gives that money back to you in cash rewards. In fact, you just bought me this cup of coffee. See how that works? Amazing! Free checking, cash rewards. Take back banking with Casasa.
Smoking hot star for Richmond Heights in the first quarter continues here to open up quarter number two as Braylon Salters off the bench gets the start here to kick off the second. Immediately strokes a triple. Yep. I mean, I'm not sure how many threes that is, Brian, but it's a, it's, it's a lot. I think about six made triples so far for Richmond Heights. Looking to get back to the state final four yet again as the Tigers have one rattle in and out. And the take inside, well defended there by Seneca East. Bordner rips down the rebound. And he picks up the foul on Braylon here at midcourt. Well, Joe, 37-3 after one quarter. You've seen Richmond Heights with your own eyes. I know at the state tournament last year, you get to see him up close and personal right now. If you're giving advice to Coach Langhurst, what do you got for him? Uh, there, there's not a lot because you just you run into a situation which sometimes happens in, in the tournament, uh, especially with a team like Richmond Heights, where um, one year from a standpoint of athleticism and size, you just don't match up very well, and then you have a team that's able to shoot the basketball like they have so far tonight. Um, creates a lot of problems for you. Bordner able to tip it back out. This one's deflected by Tyson Gardner. But they'll get a three, and it's good. Lucas Bordner reigning in a triple. So he and Hines both connecting from downtown, combined for the six Tiger points. Off the baseline, kick out three balls up for Mike McWilliams. Tigers against the second unit, opportunity to try to make a little run. Still two starters on the floor for the Spartans. Still juniors, one of them. But how about a 5-0 spark here for the Tigers? Blake Foose off the putback, tries to take a charge at the other end. Instead, it's going to be a shooting foul. And he'll put Richmond Heights on the line. That'll be Blake's second foul, I believe, of tonight. There's a look at Barber. Already got a couple of assists so far here in the contest. Havich is better than eight per game. And I think he's done that three years in a row. Last year he did for sure. Tigers make a couple exchanges for their lineup here. Caden Fritz getting his first taste of action now. As it's two for two for Tyson Garner. And we saw the last couple of years when Richmond Heights won the state title. They were younger teams, Joe. This is a collective veteran unit now that has played a ton of basketball. Um, and they played some really outstanding basketball teams too. And you, you look at their schedule. Martin RPI, RPI, I believe, has them as the hardest schedule in the state, regardless of division. Certainly number one in D4. Yeah, yes. I mean, I mean, losses to IMG Academy, Lutheran East, Garfield Heights, and Lutheran East, uh, one of the, the best teams in uh, D2. I think Garfield Heights is, is in the regionals in D1. Um, so they they have played an outstanding schedule this time. And that's roofing with the block shot. The Tigers give it right back, though, and it results in points for Salters. So the lead pushed back up. 36 is the margin. Some cheers of offense raining through the building, but not on this shot. Jose still. I mean, he hit this one in the fourth story. Look at the elevation. My goodness. Roughing from the block, turns, nice fake. Fighting for the rebound, ends up in the hands of Hines. Now Bordner from straight away, 
splash. Tough, tough shot there by Mr. Ford. Now. And we've got an offensive foul, a push off, I believe, is going to be the call against, or actually a moving screen on Tyson Garner. So the second team foul here on Richmond Heights. Get Seneca East the basketball back. As Foose ready to check back in alongside Lucas Hicks. I'm not sure if, or if he called an intentional foul or must have been an intentional foul or a technical foul. As Luke Mason going to the line shooting two. Mason, a great free throw shooter. Yeah. Almost 85% on the year. And he's just a sophomore. He'll be back in the mix next year. Likely the centerpiece of the offense. As Coach Langhurst going to pull the trigger on a home and kitchen supply timeout. 44-12. Tigers behind here. But 9-7 here in the second quarter in favor of Seneca East. So you do got to credit them. Not going into their shell there yeah. after that first quarter where Richmond Heights came out flexing. And you give your give the Civic East uh, student section and fans a lot of credit too. Yeah, they're they're right behind their team, which is is really important. <laughs> Look at the Spartans cheerleaders. One of the great venues that we have for high school basketball in the state of Ohio, and just so much tradition. A lot of big games have been played on this floor, Joe. Yeah, there's been a, a lot of games here in Northeast Ohio that there's been some outstanding talent that's uh, played on, on this floor. A lot of, uh, over the years, special Kent McKinley teams that have played here. And I, and I believe the Cleveland Charge used to play here also, the developmental league team. Off the leak out, lips out. But keeping it alive and putting it home, Jose Still Jr. Kids just a mutant in the interior. Well, they're just they're just so quick to go back up and get it that it makes it makes it tough to even to box people out. Boost from the top of the key, harassed by Barber, tipped up. It'll be intercepted by McWilliams. He sends it ahead. Here's Jose. A lot of razzle-dazzle there just to get the shot off. And now Fritz high off the square. Mason with the follow. So Luke Mason now with three points. Well, as, you, as you mentioned, Brian, I mean, the Senequise has not lost their fight at all. Um, still really battling, which is a sign of a, of a team that's well coached even though you're down you know by 30 32 here in the first half i mean they just uh <laughs> they just, just were shell shocked to start the game because of how uh, richmond heights came out both offensively and defensively playing this basketball game and they've settled down a little bit here in the second quarter but again this is a really really deep hole to try to be able to dig out of against a very talented Richmond Heights basketball team. And even for their standards, I mean, they came out playing virtually flawless, yeah, knocking down yeah, everything. Yeah, I mean, you you need you needed Richmond Heights to be a team that uh, was maybe not going to play real well tonight, and Seneca East was going to have to be a team that was probably going to have to play one of their best games. And uh, it's, uh, it's, it's been maybe a little bit of the reverse, especially in the first eight minutes. And this kid continues to hit shots. Dorian Jones fresh off the bench, instant impacts. And Jones, Jones only a junior, so uh, I'm sure that uh, he will be involved in a lot of recruiting here in the spring and summer. Here goes Dorian right side, crossover, step back. Makes him with the rebound.
Luke matched up here with Salters. Lobs over the top. Good catch by Hicks. Now another one and done as Jones gets the board. Now they'll get another three. Rattles out offensive rebound inside. Shot blocked, but some contact for Lucas Hicks. It's going to send Tyson Gardner to the charity stripe. Well, the ability that Richmond Heights has is that they can rebound the ball at the defensive end, and that they really don't need an outlet pass because any of their five players can just put the ball on the floor and bust out, and that's uh, that, that's really difficult to defend because they're just so quick getting up the basketball court. Last six points have all belonged to Richmond Heights after an 11-9 run to start quarter number two for Seneca East. Perfect trip here for Tyson. Mason has it tipped out of his hands on the trap by Wilson, and he gets trucked right at midcourt. Yeah, that's, it's just difficult for Luke Mason to try to pass over top of that trap because of the, of the length um, of Richmond Heights. And uh, I think enough said there, Joe. Yeah, I mean, you look I mean, at these guys all over the floor, 6'5", 6'5", 6'5". And Luke Mason listed at 5'9". Might be a little generous. Yep. I mean, and, and only a sophomore. Second one falls through for Wilson. He's got seven now. Tigers certainly have settled in at the offensive end. They've been getting some better looks. And roofing raises the roof with that one. Sharp move, 360 spin. Now the drive, the cut, they miss Wilson, deflecting into the hands of Jones. Dorian, mid-range, hit on the wrist. Chance to add to the Brandon Builder Sutton Bank scoreboard. In Richmond Heights, they average more than 70 per game. They're on pace for about 120 tonight. Yeah, but to give Seneca East credit, I mean, it's a... Uh they scored 16 here in the second quarter. And I think it's what, eight? 17, 16 here? Yes. So 17, 16 in the quarter here. Uh, that Richmond Heights leads by one. It's just that start was so tremendous by Richmond Heights that Civic East was not, not able to make things happen here. Bad pass by Mason, sending ahead Jones. A simple lay-in. Well, the difficulty for Luke Mason is just ha the having to handle that pressure. But Bordner comes back and knocks down a three. I believe that's his third triple make tonight. Yeah. So Lucas Bordner has not shied away. He has nine. Straight away three. Bottoms for Salters. Back up to a 40-point difference. Bordner stays aggressive. Tough up and under reverse layup. Jones, end to end, hanging. Just, just not able to stop their drive to the basket in transition. Foul's going to go here on Jeremy Wilson. Just be the third on Richmond Heights. A couple more to give. And a good look at just the hang time there in transition for the Spartans. So with 18 seconds, good a substitution, Mike McWilliams. And the Tigers 
Chance, though. Trying to get some points. Backdoor cut for Hines. Lips out. Great sideline out of bounds play by Coach Langhurst. Clean look from the corner. Flying in but missing it with the follow is Jones. But second chance points for winners will close out this first half. What a performance for the Spartans as they head into the locker room. 63 points for them through two quarters of play. Keep it here as we will return with our Attica Lumber halftime report. Break down all the statistics that you need to know. Get you set up for half number two. You're watching free basketball right here on the OH Report. Hi, I'm Always Report founder Brian Skaronski, and you've just enjoyed first half action live and free exclusively right here on the OH Report. But stick around, still plenty more to come right here as our boys high school basketball returns after this. Instead of paying for some big name spokesperson, Kasasa Checking gives that money back to you in cash rewards. In fact, you just bought me this cup of coffee. See how that works? Amazing! Free checking, cash rewards. Take back banking with Kasasa. At Willard Family Dentistry, we are committed to providing our community with individualized, informative care. We take the time to get to know you and help you understand your oral health to make sure we help you achieve your healthiest, most brilliant smile. Whether you are due for a cleaning or are interested in cosmetic treatments, you are in good hands with the team at Willard Family Dentistry. Call or visit them online to book your appointment today. Tonight's tournament broadcast brought to you 100% free of charge thanks to all of our generous sponsors, including Attica Lumber. Tony L. and the record-setting Tigers. Big shout out to them. Tony the Tiger brought to you by the ALC. Willard Family Dentistry and Emily Booker for all of your dentistry needs in the Attica area, of course, and then in Willard. Make sure that you hit up Emily in the description down here. If you look low, yep, that's right. You can see how to contact her. Sutton Bank, earn the cash reward of your choice for doing simple activities with Kasasa. Brandon Builders, LLC, your blueprint to success. And Home and Kitchen Supply, your one-stop shop for kitchen and baths, windows and doors since 1970. We'll take one more quick commercial timeout. When we come back, we will have your Attica Lumber Halftime Report.
Hi, I'm Always Report founder Brian Skaronski, and you've just enjoyed first half action live and free exclusively right here on the OH Report. But stick around, still plenty more to come right here as our boys high school basketball returns after this. Instead of paying for some big name spokesperson, Casasa Checking gives that money back to you in cash rewards. In fact, you just bought me this cup of coffee. See how that works? Amazing! Free checking, cash rewards. Take back banking with Casasa. At Willard Family Dentistry, we are committed to providing our community with individualized, informative care. We take the time to get to know you and help you understand your oral health to make sure we help you achieve your healthiest, most brilliant smile. Whether you are due for a cleaning or are interested in cosmetic treatments, you are in good hands with the team at Willard Family Dentistry. Call or visit them online to book your appointment today. It's halftime here at the Camp Memorial Fieldhouse as we welcome you inside of the Attica Lumber Halftime Show. 63-19 the count with two quarters in the books. State number three, Richmond Heights, the two-time defending state champions, really looking solid so far. I'm Brian Skaronski, Joe Baylog is with me. And a little surprised by the differential. Not so much that Richmond Heights is a great team, we knew that, Joe. But man, did they come out fast and furious. And then we gave a lot of credit to the Tigers. Battling back in that second quarter where they put up 16 points. So they're at least, they're settling into this regional round where they've never been before. Yeah, I mean, uh, that, that's that's undoubtedly got to be one of the best starts that Richmond Heights has had uh, the entire, their, their entire season. Um, I mean, I think you said what they made their first five threes. I think so, somewhere in that realm. Um, so, uh, you know, it's, it's difficult. One, the task to, to play a team like this is, is difficult enough, but when they come out with a start like that, it's, it makes it extremely difficult. So uh, you, you give Cynic East a lot of credit, though, because the second quarter, I think it was, ended up 26-16, but, you know, at one point, I think it was 17-16. But uh, the, the thing that Richmond Heights does so well is they, they just have those spurts of, you know, a 6 0 run, 8 0 run. Well, they started the game with what a. Seven points in 50 th seconds. Yeah, I mean, but it was. And, and so it's, you know, it's just hard to recover from, from that. And, 
you know, if you're um, if you're Cynic East, there's no way that, that really any team on your schedule prepared you for a team like Richmond Heights tonight. So, uh, uh, I mean, I think the, the thing that uh, that Cynic East will leave here with tonight is you not only did you get beat by a better team, but you probably got beat by one of the best teams that uh, maybe, you know, traditionally here over the past five years has not just been the best team in Division Four, but maybe the best team, one of the best teams in, in the state of Ohio. Forced 13 Tiger giveaways there in that first half. Meanwhile, knocking down seven threes, had three big dunks in that first half. So as advertised, Richmond Heights on the stage where they've been, I believe, six years in a row to the regionals, looking to get back to the state final four for the fourth straight year. And well in front here tonight as we will get a running clock here to begin yep. this third quarter. Yep. But it'll be Blake Foos and the Tigers with the basketball. And for Coach Langhurst and his gang, maybe now it just kind of changed it. Let's get this below 30. Let's try to get that moving clock stopped and then go from there. Opening possession. Bordner played really well in that first half. Strokes three triples. Now mid-range cashes this one. Deep three looking. You got to come out and guard winners. And he just been phenomenal from the perimeters tonight. 22 points. He's outdueled the Tigers as a solo act. And still Junior chases this one down, and he's fouled. So we'll have free throws coming up. Still Jr. at the line. He's got six points so far. The lefty knocks that one down. Foosh just has it poked away. We've seen that a bunch tonight, especially from Jeremy Wilson. And then the step through. Jones lays it in, pushes his total up to 18. So many weapons all over the floor. I mean, their their starting five's got to be as good as any starting five that of any team that we're going to see uh, here in the tournament throughout the season. I mean, all very extremely quick. All can really shoot it, and uh, the length their length defensively just causes so much problems. So. Uh, Hines goes baseline, had a little bit of a step, but rejected by Barber. Right into the hands, though, of Mason. Swift crossover, mid-range pull up a little short there for Winners. One of the few that Winners has missed tonight. He's kind of done it all. And Mason with the three. So Luke Mason, the sophomore, starting to pick things up. He'll come out in pressure here. Winners kicks it out to Jones. Nothing but raindrops tonight from beyond the arc for Richmond Heights. Eight made trifectus. So this quarter is going to move very fast, of course. Clock running, four and a half minutes to go before we reach money time. 
Tigers have put up seven points, though, in the frame. Richmond Heights has eight. Looking to add two more here with Jones. Great, great hustle by Foose to not just allow an easy dunk or an easy layup and forces the miss. Two-man game. Foose puts it up. Well, short that time. But here's Mason. He's played really well here in the third. Now Bordner looking for his 4-3. Deflected. And the Tigers recover. They got the steal. Fake by Hines. Scoop shot. And cleared here by Wilson. Who's going to get tripped up by Blake. Get roofing into the mix here as Hicks takes a seat. Caden Fritz also going to check in for Foos. Just too much space, long range, but a rare miss here for Winners tonight. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Winners with, with 22 and Jones with 21 here. As we're just three minutes to left go in the third. <laughs> Mason has it poked a little bit out of his hands here by Barber. And now we'll get a foul on the perimeter. This will be the third on the Spartans. And it's going to go on Dorian Jones. Actually, excuse me, it'll be on Barbaris first. Barber almost beaten Mason to the spot. Yeah, he's, he's just got a really quick, quick feet defensively. Offensive rebound, 18th board secured tonight by the Tigers. As Bordner splits the gap, nice, nice shovel pass. pass. Yep. Roofing blocked twice. Great hustle getting on the floor. Just unable to secure it. Off the breakout. Almost the traveling violation, but Jose recollects and lays it in. Good look for Bordner from the corner, bottoms up. Timeout, Coach Langhurst and the Tigers. It'll be a full. And 10-10 here this quarter. You see on our home and kitchen supply graphic. So Seneca East playing a lot better after a bit of an unfortunate start here tonight in the first quarter. Looks well, a lot better in these last couple quarters. Yeah. I mean, they, they've been able to get to the offensive glass, which has helped them get some second and, chance, second and third chance scoring opportunities. Um, but the thing that, that they've continued to do throughout the whole game is they have played with great effort. It's, it's just, again, I, I don't think, uh, I mean, it, it'll be interesting to hear uh, Coach Rogers' comments possibly after the game, but. You know, that's got to be one of the best starts. And it wasn't like uh, that Seneca East was just giving up layups. It was, they, they were knocking down threes from, you know, NBA range. Um, and I don't care who you're playing when a team shoots it like that, um, it's difficult. And then to try to be able to come back from a deficit uh, of that magnitude, especially against such an outstanding basketball team, is really difficult. Barber seldom looked for his own shot tonight. Now Wilson over the left shoulder cooks that one in. That little jump hook in the lane just elevates. Able to go right over top of the Seneca East defense for that basket. And that's what's difficult right there when, when uh, that kind of bumps allowed. You, you know, it, it makes things really difficult offensively for you to kind of be able to do things. Bordner with a little slip by Barber. Nice Sends it for Fritz. Fritz. So Caden Fritz heading to the free throw line. Nice shot fake there. Yeah. 
It's his first points here of the evening. And he'll cap off the old-fashioned three-point play as we're down to the final 20 ticks here in quarter number three. Looks like Barber might have got poked in the eye. Gives it off here to the near side and Damaris Winters Jr. Who has been a star here tonight. Almost rainbowed that one in so the Tigers will get a chance for the last shot. Here's Mason. Good if it goes. And it's a little short so we head to money time with Richmond Heights. 75, Seneca East 32. Instead of paying for some big name spokesperson, Casasa Checking gives that money back to you in cash rewards. In fact, you just bought me this cup of coffee. See how that works? Amazing! Free checking, cash rewards. Take back banking with Casasa. It is money time here at Canton Memorial Fieldhouse as the stacks dropping from the ceiling. And, well, Richmond Heights, they've been dropping a lot of bombs here tonight as well. Eight made three so far for the Spartans as they own a 75-32 cushion. I'm Brian Skrowski. Joe Baylog is with me here tonight. And you got to look at the cup glass half full. Tigers won that third quarter, 13-12, yep. yep. Joe. Yep. So they've got their memory here against Richmond Heights in the round of regionals and see if they can cap it off with more here in the fourth. Mason out defending on the perimeter here on Chevy Dozier. And a big roar from the student section of Seneca East who's been great here tonight. Yep, Hicks with a nice block there and, and uh, goes off Dozier so it's gonna be Tigers basketball out of bounds. Foose, the quarterback, connects deep Bordner. A series of moves, but he's turned away in the lane. Joey Emery with a block shot, and it leads to a transition triple. It's a little short, though, so the Tigers pushing the pace. Mason, double team. And the turnaround jumper, left hand for Foose. Trying to carve his way in, but losing it was Tyson Gardner. Solid in the second quarter. Here he is off the theft with the scoop. And he'll be sent to the free throw line by Lucas Hicks. Another look on our Willard Family Dentistry replay. It's poked away, but right place, right time, and Gardner was there for it. Gardner with four points in that first half. He'll add one right here. And he'll go two for two. Boost has to pick up the bounce and tipped away as he tried to find Jake Bowerman inside. Big speed there going end to end for Emery. Oh, 
Richmond Heights already over their season average for scoring total tonight. And Foose mishandles right in front of us. Turnover number 22 for the Tigers. And Blake heads over to the sideline. So he's battled here tonight. Got just a one field goal. As it continues to rain triples for the Spartans. Tough catch by Hines. And just smacked out of there. Three ball from Mason. He's had a couple of those that have been almost all the way down and got popped back out. No look pass. Leads to a three from the corner. Not this time with offensive rebound by Salters. He missed it in tight. Griffin with the box out there. Now a Fancy up and under Lucas Bordner. He's brought his A game here to regionals. Kids got 16. Uh, that was a pretty finish off the window uh, there, Joe. Even more impressive. He finished and then sprinted back and uh, almost had a steal here uh, in the half court uh, defensively. So uh, Lucas Bordner continued to play extremely hard. Spartans get Tristan Kyle on the floor for the first time. 6'6", six, six junior. Also got Ty Harrison Jr. out there, the freshman. And this is Emery on the drive down the lane. As the clock continues to wind, down to two and a half minutes remaining here. Spartans on a 7-2 lead advantage here in this fourth quarter. Make it 9-2 on the pretty play there for Joey. Nice read that time to pick that off for Harrison Jr. Off the breakout. Richmond Heights misses off the window, so here's Fritz. Tough angle. But he's got two free throws coming up after the foul on Dozier. Fritz able to deliver with the first. And now Coach Langhurst. Going to spend a timeout. I think he's going to try to get all his seniors in here at the end of the basketball game. Nice gesture by Coach Langhurst. So that'd be Hines, Bowerman, Fritz, Blake Foose, Lucas Hicks, roofing as well. Maybe they just let him play six here for the last minute and a half, Joe. Why not? <laughs> and so next year, the Tigers will return Luke Mason and Lucas Bordner, who's played really well tonight. So they've got two pretty good scorers coming back. Um, and then it's just going to be a, a situation to see if some younger players can step up and fill in some roles. So uh, that's the important part of getting, winning a district title, winning a league title, getting a chance to play in the regional is hopefully for your younger players it gives them a little bit of taste as they're sitting here in the stands tonight that they want to get that opportunity. But got to give uh, Seneca East a lot of credit. Uh, outstanding season by Coach Langhurst. Um, as we said, the first district title ever. So um, I'm sure they're hoping that this is not their only district title uh, here in the next 50 years. So. How about the coast? The coast work for the big fella, Kyle, off the board. Slapped out of his hands at the other ends. 
And lurking over in the wings, that was Warren JFK here in the house. They'll be taking on Downton in the second half of our doubleheader here tonight. Winner will get Richmond Heights. And we saw the Bulldogs knock off JFK in that matchup last year as Dozier steps back from long range. And Dozier only, only a sophomore, so Richmond Heights will continue to reload uh, next year. Closing minute. Here's a theft from Kyle. He steps down the lane with a block shot from Caden Fritz. Actually, that was Hines. Now the other way. We'll close out the game with a couple of free throws. So well done there for Aiden Hines. Finishing up tonight's game here with a little flurry. He's got three points. Can add a couple more on his regional total. And he will knock it down here. But Richmond Heights punching their ticket back to the regional championship yet again with a convincing 50-point win. So the Spartans move on. Seneca East closes up their season at 21 and 6. Stay with us. We'll be back for the Attica Lumber Post game. They'll include an interview with our Sutton Bank most valuable player. That's all coming up on the other side of a quick commercial timeout. Instead of paying for some big name spokesperson, Casasa Checking gives that money back to you in cash rewards. In fact, you just bought me this cup of coffee. See how that works? Amazing! Free checking, cash rewards. Take back banking with Casasa. At Willard Family Dentistry, we are committed to providing our community with individualized, informative care. We take the time to get to know you and help you understand your oral health to make sure we help you achieve your healthiest, most brilliant smile. Whether you are due for a cleaning or are interested in cosmetic treatments, you are in good hands with the team at Willard Family Dentistry. Call or visit them online to book your appointment today.
return now to Canton at the Memorial Fieldhouse for your Attica Lumber post-game show. All four quarters in the books here at the regional semifinals. And Seneca East comes up short against Richmond Heights as the Tigers put a bow on their season at 21-6. and six. I'm Brian Skrowski. Joe Baylog joined me here tonight. Let's talk first about Richmond Heights and just the explosiveness that they came out and displayed right away in the game, Joe. And you could tell that the Tigers hadn't seen anything quite like that all year. It took them a while to get a feel for the flow of the game because this is just a different beast and looks like they're probably headed back to Dayton yet again. Yeah, they're going to be a team that's going to be really hard to beat. Uh, uh, wh whoever wins the second game between JFK and, and Dalton. Um, but, you know, as I mentioned, uh, Richmond Heights probably could not have had a better start, may have not had a better start to any of their games all year. Um, and <laughs> the worst start the Seneca East could yeah, have. Yeah, sure. That combination just uh, just put them in a deep, deep hole. But you give you give uh, a lot of credit. Uh, their, their Seneca East did not stop playing. I mean, they continue to, to play hard. They continue to try to do the things that, had made them win, had helped them win 21 games. Um, so they, they, I think they can walk out of here with their heads high, knowing that, you know, they got beat by not just, uh, just they, they got beat by one of the best teams in the state tonight, not just one of the best teams in Division Four. Max Preps feels like one of the best teams in the country. Yeah. yeah. One of those type of squads. As we'll take a look at the final stats of the night, and Richmond Heights getting it done from everywhere. I mean, they came out. I. They hit multiple threes right away, some deep ones too, Joe, and they can just, they get in the lane with their length and their athleticism just at ease. Um, Seneca East held to just three points in that first quarter. Then they were like, okay, we're here. We may as well make a splash here. And things got a lot better for them, and particularly for who's going to be our game MVP tonight, Lucas Bordner as a junior. Uh, I mean, he really was exceptional. Uh, Lu Lucas, you know, played with no fear tonight. Um, you know, looked to to attack the basket, but again, um, the difficulty when you attack the basket tonight, there was somebody at you know six five and vertical, probably you know thirty plus inches that was going to you know contest that shot, and that made it really really difficult. No question about it. So the Tigers, an unbelievable season, comes to a close. First time ever as district champions. Northern 10 champions as well for the first time in their history. So we salute Seneca East for everything they accomplished. But it's going to be about Richmond Heights moving back here to the regional championship to take on the winner of the second game. And we had three of these four teams here a season ago at this stage. Downton was able to take care of Warren JFK. They ended up matching up with Richmond Heights in the championship. And then, of course, we know Spartans moved on, went 29-0 last year. And even though their record may be very deceptive, Joe, at that 16-9 mark, this team, as we already talked about, there's just so much talent that it, it would be hard to picture anybody in Division Four even just challenging this team. Yeah, it's, it's it, that's that's going to be difficult uh, uh, for anybody. Um, I, I mean, I, I think you know what's going to have to happen is is uh, you know Richmond Heights is going to have to have a night where they don't shoot the basketball you know real well. But the hard part is they're so athletic of you know uh, getting to the glass that you're going to have to do a great job of keeping them off the glass. And then you know the big thing is you can't have live ball turnovers against them because. Um, you know, probably out of, uh, I think, what do we say that uh, Seneca said 13 turnovers in the first half maybe. You know, they, they probably scored close to 20 points on those tur off those turnovers. So um, they, they, are, they are a very difficult team for a, a Division IV uh, squad to be able to handle because, you know, they, they played against all the big boys, as we mentioned. You know, the St. Ed's, the St. Ignatius, uh, the IMG Academies. Uh, and those schools all have big time players um, and Richmond Heights has a lot of big time players also. Yeah, they actually, they, they dropped out of the Chagrin Valley Conference this season because they went six straight years as undefeated champions in that league. So they decided really get battle tested. They traveled the country, they played everybody, including the Tigers now as they add another scalp and move on to the regional final. We're going to take one more quick commercial timeout. We will be back, and when we are, we're going to hear from Lucas Bordner, 
our Sutton Bank MVP about what it was like out there battling with the Spartans. And then we'll wrap things up, get you ready for the second half of our doubleheader. Stay there. Instead of paying for some big name spokesperson, Kasasa Checking gives that money back to you in cash rewards. In fact, you just bought me this cup of coffee. See how that works? Amazing! Free checking, cash rewards. Take back banking with Kasasa. Big thank you to all of our generous sponsors coming together to bring you guys free basketball here tonight, including our good friends over at Sutton Bank. You can earn the cash reward of your choice for doing simple activities with Kasasa. Brandon Builders, LLC, your blueprint to success. Home and Kitchen Supply, your one-stop shop for kitchen and baths, windows and doors since 1970. Willard Family Dentistry. Stop in, see Emily Booker for all of your general dentistry needs over in the Attica and Willard area. She will take fantastic care of you and your entire family. And Attica Lumber.